MG, please, don't blame Jude. Mary, he lied to me again. Last night, this morning, what's the difference? It was a slip of the tongue. It's always a slip of the tongue with you. Angie, please, I'm, I'm sure Jude didn't mean any harm. Just gonna stand there and let her make excuses for you again? We agreed to separate. Did he tell you that? But things were going so well, the date nights. Yeah, that was counselling. And it didn't work. You even lied about that. Do we have to do this here? Yes, Jude, we have to do this here. You dragged me here under false pretenses for some pathetic attempt to... You know what? I'm gone. I'm getting charged and don't follow me. Poor Mary's going to kill her. Oh, we'll have to rally round her. I agree. She will need her friends. Right, I'm off to Jack's. <laughs> ah, Jim, if she's alive, why that one? Tell me about it. Told him we should have bought paper plates. Yeah. To catch up. Oh. I'm sorry, mate. Hey, who'd have thought? Tommy Orpington in my house. How's Jack? He's fine. He's reading with Sophie. She's been a blessing, that one. You all have. I'll get it. How about Kirk, though, eh? Nice wheels, Jack. That's just funny, though. Jack said there was only Kirk acting normal. Where is everyone? Oh, Jack wasn't feeling too good, so he's just having a rest. It's a welcome home party. This was saying Jackie's left the will or something. Yeah. Like she had anything worth leaving. Well, never know. Nothing of value, maybe, but it might be pictures, letters, anything. You don't want it pinning. Well, less I'm reminded of my childhood, the better. Still. Family's family. I'd be thrilled if somebody made that effort for me. <laughs> chance of that. He lied to her like he lied to me. I am so ashamed of you, Jude. Can you give it a rest? You can't make me feel any worse than I do already. It's not about making anybody feel bad. It's more fundamental. You are a compulsive liar, Jude. No, I'm not. He's doing it again. <laughs> Sorry, no, I, I'm just trying to diffuse things. I feel such a fool, manipulated and betrayed by my own son. Fine. Blame me. Take her side. Wash your hands of me if you like. After all, you've done it before. Mmm, trouble at Mel. <laughs> if only. It would have been a much better day out, in my opinion. Gee, it's quite a shirt, isn't he, for a marine biologist? I always imagined it was the kind of job where you'd be dead calm and tranquil. Oh, honey, he's not a marine biologist. Oh. Oh, well, that explains it, then. Oh, yeah, Rita did mention something. I'll tell you later, and we'll see it all now. Oh, all right. See you in a bit. You wanted to see me? Yes, I did, and you can drop the attitude and all. Me drop the attitude. You've got some brass neck, you. Hey, I saw you earlier, coming out with the Rovers all over Daniel. Oh, sit down, Sinead. And stop bossing me about and all. I am your boss. Yeah, well, then I quit. And I want you to keep your hands off my block. You're not quitting, you silly girl. Now, listen, I was talking to Daniel because he begged me to not give you a hard time over the material. What? You kissed him. I kissed Flame and everybody. Stop getting your knickers in a twist and sit down. I said I wouldn't say anything, but this level of hysteria obviously needs honesty. Daniel told me about you being pregnant. And had I known that, I would never have come down on you so hard. Well, are you going to say anything or are you going to sit there making me feel awkward? I think I'm bleeding. I don't know where Jude is at the moment, Mary, and to be honest, I don't care. He's not answering his phone. Well, that's what he does. When the proverbial hits, he runs off and buries his head in the sand. Angie, I can only apologize. It, it really was my idea. If I'd known that you were going into counseling, I, I never would have suggested it. It's not just the counseling, though. 
We agreed to separate, Mary. He asked me to wait one more day, presumably for that farce. I'm sorry. I know that you meant well, and I don't blame you for any of this. But there must be something wrong with him, don't you think? I mean, to keep lying over and over and never expect to be found out, and then when he is, to keep lying again and again? Yeah, well, it's not my problem anymore. Probably not. You might not always be his wife, but I'll always be his mother. I am so sorry, Angie. What for? For everything. For not seeing Jude's problems soon enough, for always taking his side when the evidence was waving in my face like clean sheets on a line. But whatever happens, I am your friend and I always will be. And it's not just about Jude and George. You have brought a huge amount of joy into my life and I will always be grateful to you for that. Kettle on. I left the others in the pub. <laughs> and I'm sure you've seen enough of me for one day. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, let's just always promise to stay in touch. You're leaving? At some point. I, yeah, I have to. I came here for Jude. This isn't my home. And I have to put George first and work out what's right for both of us. Well, whatever you think's best. Goodbye, Angie. Bye. Hello there. Hi, Roy. Sorry about that embarrassing mess earlier. No apology is necessary. Enjoyed the samosas. Checking out the old BB&B. Ow! Didn't get stung, did you? Uh, Yes, I, I did. Uh, and killed the poor bee in the process, I'm afraid. Which wasn't my intention when I decided to visit. <laughs> Can I just say that uh, I sympathise with your plight? Must be the only one who does. I, I've always found the expectations and obligations of romance a puzzling arena. I'm one of which. <laughs> Seem to be having a little difficulty breathing. <laughs> Not allergic, are you? <laughs> I suppose you would be having a BB and B. There's some beans. What? It's the uh, community garden on Victoria Street. A bee sting, I think. OK, thanks. Epi Ben. All right, I'm going to run to the medical centre to get another one just in case. Just stay with him, OK? okay. <coughs> Jude? Just relax, Roy. It was a bee sting. You must be allergic. No idea. You learn something new every day. You saved me. Just relax. Wait for the ambulance to get here. Cat. 
lose this baby. Me and Daniel have been pregnant before. Sinead, you are the midwife, OK? You're fine. The baby is fine. Then why does she want to do more tests? Belt and braces, love. We've got to be grateful to them for that, right? I'm so, so sorry. I left my phone on charge while I went and took Eccles out for a walk. Oh, calm down. Everything's all right. Everything's all right. It's just waiting to see if she needs more blood tests. Is everything OK? What happened? Um, I, I was spotting, bleeding a bit. What? And the midwife said that it's not unusual at, at this point in pregnancy. The midwife also said there's nothing to worry about. The blood tests are just precaution. And since this is a girlfriend-boyfriend kind of moment, I'll get back to the fact chain. I should have been there with you. Thank God you were, Carla. Oh, she's been great. Oh, I'd do it for any of my girls. We're great for them. This doesn't mean your godmother are out, though. I'm not sure that's my bag anyway. Huh? Let me know where you go. OK, thanks. I'm so glad that you're OK. You and the baby. Mary, you can't blame yourself. <sighs> well, who should I blame? Angela Merkel. Oh, come on, love. Who knows? Maybe now it's out in the open. The pair of them will work things out. No, it's past that. It's finished. Angie said so, and I'm heartbroken. All right, losers. So, the Angie and Jude show went pear-shaped then. Oh, as you rightly predicted. Congratulations. To the left, so. Supposed to be covering me. What do you think I'm doing behind that wall, painting my nails? Ah! Oh. <laughs> busted. Not oh, busted, we're dead. All right, come on, privates. Webster, tea's on the table. I'm gonna get changed. Ruby got squashed all down my top before. Oh, yeah. Let me help you some. I'm fine. Listen, hurry up, because there's nothing worse than a cold cottage pie. It's not that great when it's hot, to be fair. Don't you be so cheeky. That's my signature dish. Dad. I just want to make sure he's okay. He's fine. Remember what the doctor said? He needs normality. Too much fussing and he's just going to freak out. Like the party, mate. Everyone was trying their best, Dad. Jack knows that. But what we need is his old routine back. I'll just, just worry about him, OK? Dad, he's going to be fine. I hope so. Well, OK, I couldn't have done any of this without you. Don't start getting soppy on me. Hey, soppy? Me? Trust me. Come Christmas, I'll be asking for one of them springy blade things and we won't see him for dust. My friend Yolanda's grand died. She got a necklace. <laughs> Not this again. I want a necklace. Oh, do you indeed? Right, listen to me, girls. When people die, it's not about what we get. It was for Yolanda. She loves that necklace. Hope, oh, let Daddy speak, eh? Right, I know you didn't know your nan, but she's still your nan. So I'm going to go and see what she's left behind. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I've thought about it, you know. There might be some pictures or some photos that you two might want to keep for when you're older. Yeah, maybe pictures of your daddy when he was your age. Really? Well, I doubt it, but we'll see. Like I said, she's not exactly the sentimental type. Will there be the necklace? <laughs> I think you two are concentrating a little bit too much on these necklaces. Oh, you never know. She might have left something for her two little granddaughters. No, I don't think it'll be very expensive, though. <laughs> Can we go watch on TV? Yes, go on, just while we clear up. Oh. We'll find a couple of cute little necklaces for, um, pretend they were from your mum. That's more than she ever did. She didn't deserve you being so thoughtful. Yeah, well, she's, she's dead now, Ty, isn't she? What's it matter? I just thought, you know, if she was so desperate for me to go, then I may as well. Yeah. You don't think... Oh, no, forget it. What? Well, I've just been thinking. You said that she wouldn't have left you anything, didn't you? <laughs> Otherwise, she'd have sold it a long time ago. Yeah, so what if it's not something that she wanted you to have, but something that she wanted you to know? You know, like in that film the other night when they found out that woman's real dad was a Nazi? <laughs> Yeah, because how many Nazis are hanging around in the Northwest in the 80s, eh? <laughs> well, not a Nazi, obviously, but just if it's like a confession or whatever. If it is, then maybe it's something she didn't feel comfortable telling you while she was alive. Oh, I don't know. I'm probably being daft. So have you tracked Jude down? No, he's still not replying. Oh, typical bloke. First sign of a problem, and they do a runner. Oh, is that what Steve does? 
Yeah, actually. Every flaming time. Mary, I love you to bits, you know that, right? But Jude can be a bit of a wet blanket at times. Oi! I can slag my husband off, but you can keep your opinions to yourself. Whoops. Well, is everything all right? Is Jude back? No, he sent me a text to say that he's fine and he'll be back later. I got a sitter for George. I just wanted to come and say thanks. For what? For trying. It's more than we've been doing for God knows how long. Ah, oh, well, this is fun. Why don't you sit down and have a drink, Angie? Tracy was just going to the bar. Ah. Oh. Small red, please. <sighs> Anybody else? Uh, these beverages are, are on me. Oh, perfect timing. Roy, well, is everything all right? This man, Roy, right, please. I saved my life. <laughs> You seem inappropriately happy. Tyler's just been taken into custody. What? Well, I just spoke to Adam. He said there was nothing more we could do. Nah, it's not what we did. It's what Tyler did. Yeah, look at this. So I found it on Tyler's Friends Connect page. Have a look at this. He must have posted it five minutes after he came out of court. Right, just got out of court. What can I say? What a load of ponces. The judge was a massive, fat cow. Oh. She little smile from me and she was like putty in my hands. Do you know what I say? Up the British justice system, right? It's a load of shit. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. Oh, trust me, it gets a lot worse. Well, from our point of view, a lot better. It's racist, sexist, homophobic. Great. Little Tyler, he's hit the jackpot here. He's always been a moron. Yeah, so we showed it to the police and he got rearrested. And Adam reckons he's going to go straight to young offenders this time. Oh, that is brilliant. <laughs> Up the British justice system, indeed. Yeah, listen, Peter, I'm sorry. You were right. You did the right thing. You've got to stand up to these people. Always, you did that. Come here. I have never been more proud of you. <laughs> Ooh, I could get used to this. You should be so lucky. As soon as that sprog pops out, I'm not touching a foot ever again. <laughs> so, I've got a confession. Go on. I saw Carla kissing you outside the Rovers. And I went off at her. I quit my job and everything. She kisses everyone. Yeah, I know. I was, I was just jealous and daft and hormonal. Oh, I must have looked terrible. Sorry. No, no, it's all right. It's my fault. Oh. How does she do it, eh? Hmm? Mrs Connor. She can be a right cow one minute and then Wonder Woman the next. Yeah, she's great to have in your corner. She's not so good to have in the opposite one. Hmm. Anyway, that's enough about her. I just want to think about us tonight. Mm-hmm. All we have to do is take care of each other. And this little one. And that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. I can lodge these tomorrow. That's if I can find all the other bits and bobs. Honestly, my office is like the Bermuda Triangle some days. Well, thank you for bringing them round here for us to sign. You've saved us a trip. Oh, it's a pleasure. That's me out of the house. Do you know, I've always encouraged Arla to travel. I think the only reason she's going is because she's broken up with her frankly awful girlfriend. It's funny, isn't it, that we've both got gay daughters? <laughs> that is such a coincidence. Isn't it? Yeah. Is it? You wouldn't be saying that if you both had straight kids, would you? Well, I've got one of them as well. Oh, God, me too. <laughs> that is mad, that is. Same again. Uh, yes, please. You know, Sophie's amazing. She's been looking after her little brother all day. He's just had his foot removed. He just got back from rehab today, bless him. What, and you're in the pub? Oh, no. No, he's not my son. Oh. He's my ex-husband's, Sophie's half-brother. Right. I wouldn't leave a child with one foot at home. No. No, not on the first night, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, Isla's being so stubborn. Her career has just taken off, and yet she reckons she's got nothing to keep her here. Oh, well, now Sophie's back. Do you reckon this is a good time for her and Isla to finally meet? Well, I think anything's worth a try. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let me see. 
At dinner time, I embarrassed a small boy that had just come out of hospital, and tonight I've been listening to these two comparing their lesbian daughters. It's times like this that you wish they had a pool table, innit? Right, so, Roy, let me get this straight. You bought a beehive. A puree. Right, but you're allergic to bees. The irony. I can't believe you've gone all these years and not been stung. I've never been stung either. Mother was very protective of me as a child. Yeah, she had a morbid fear of all flying insects. I thought she had a morbid fear of the colour yellow. Oh, indeed. Yeah. Which was why bees were her particular bête noire. Summer times you'd find us walking through the lavender fields in glorious sunshine wearing tracksuits, gloves and balaclavas. So what, Jude? You, like, just rocked into action? It was just instinct, really. Ah, uh, the, the paramedic said he did it all by the book, the EpiPen. I always carry one for George's allergies. <laughs> What's so funny? Nothing. Nothing, just uh, <clears throat> some people, eh? Honestly, I, I, I'm bursting with pride, my son, the lifesaver. Can you stop banging on about it? It's only what anyone else would have done. I you? wouldn't know what to do. Me neither. You need to be commended. I mean, it doesn't bear thinking about what could have happened without your quick thinking. I mean, I, I could have lost my, my best friend. I, I wouldn't necessarily say best or, or, or friend. Just go with it, Roy. You did a really good thing, Jude. Proud of you. Coming up, charming the locals and ruffling a few feathers on the way. We're back with the determined Miss Sharp as ITV's Vanity Fair continues next. Mm -hmm. 